I really appreciate you being here because it's really important for me to have and give another dimension to my artwork. One of the reasons that I lecture about my artwork is that <clears throat> I'm tired of critics saying that Cecilia Alvarez paints handsome Hispanic women, which is fine if you never talk to me and, never and, we never know, and you never know what the symbology is behind my artwork. A lot of the, the work that I do is about creating a visual vernacular that uses and references my cultural, back, cultural backgrounds, but also to evolve the discourse on humanitarian thought. One of my mandates to myself, myself is how to create art, how to create a visual vernacular that doesn't reference violence? How do you create a visual vernacular that accurately portrays one's cultures? Right now, the most predominant form of art that we all get ex exposed to is about buying, being good consumers, sort of mindless consumers, and creating addictions for things that we don't need. I was educated predominantly in the United States, and one of the first things that I learned in uh, elementary school, third grade, when I started speaking English, um, was in order to become an American, you have to strip yourself of your worldview, wherever you came from. You have to strip yourself of your language. You have to strip yourself of your values. And I start with my mother and my, um, my tia. Uh, they were identical twins. <clears throat> this is called Las Cuatas Diego. And the reason I use them is because not only were they beautiful women, but they were exceedingly generous women. They weren't wealthy. See, I grew up poor and I had no clue that I was poor because there was so much richness in our life. The storytelling, the beautiful pottery that would crack me up because when, you know, we'd have all these pot little, you know, like ceramic plates that were hand painted. And they thought when I was a kid that it was so de classe, you know, that's what, that's what poor people that are backward and primitive use. We're going to get rid of them and buy Melmac, you know, this plastic crap that all looks the same. So it used to drive me nuts because we used to go to my grandmother's house every day in Tijuana. We lived in San Isidro and my grandmother lived five minutes away in Tijuana. So we'd go every time for med every day for merienda after school. And um, every time we'd cross the border, there was this really annoying billboard, huge billboard for superior beer. And there's this long, Teutonic, blonde woman that you would be hard-pressed to find one in Norway that looked like that, super airbrushed, wearing a bikini with her blonde hair blowing back. And the caption said, la rubia superior, the blonde is superior. So here's the whole propaganda that started in Mexico, for example, and in many parts of the world. Your form of beauty is backward and primitive. This is the modern superior beauty. And it would drive me nuts because nobody else would get that. And I was like 13 and it would drive me nuts. But it was this whole concept of wherever you come from and how whatever sense of beauty and power is important to you, it's not worthy. This is what's worthy. <clears throat> this piece is called Mujer, the way she was dressed. She deserved what she got. And um, this is a, you've seen it, it's a pretty big piece. And um, th this fulfills a couple of, of, of things that I like to touch upon. Of course, you don't have to what, uh, see in my paintings what I say. <laughs> you can see other things in it. But this piece um, talks about uh, a sense of beauty. Where I grew up, beautiful was not being skinny and anorexic or, or blonde. Well, when I was younger, it's changed now. Um, to talk about that sense of beauty that's more rotund, more beautiful, in the sense that, you know, if there's a famine, you might be able to survive that one. But also, I, when I was doing this painting, there was a landmark legal battle going on. This was in the 80s. The guy was convicted by the jury that he did rape this woman, the judge overturned the conviction. 
because during the jury process, it, ta uh, it came out that she wasn't wearing underwear when she was walking down that street, you know, and he dragged her into the, into the alley and raped her. Because she wasn't wearing underwear, she deserved what she got. And a law is only as good as the person that interprets it. A religion is only as good as how a person interprets it. A society is only as good as it is, its interpreters. I tend to read newspapers from around the world because uh, I can't rely on U.S. newspapers for anything that's significant. But I was reading about Brazil when I was doing this, and um, they had an article where FUNAI, which is the BIA of Brazil, um, had this article about a protest that had been launched against um, major corporations dynamite out the windows to dislodge some of the bigger trees so they can get the heavy equipment to mine and, you know, deforest the, the, the jungle. And, um, and there was a protest because a lot of Indians were being killed in this kind of uh, 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 process, uh, you know. And the article was very disturbing because it said, well, one of the politicians said, well, it is a little disturbing, but there are unfortunate expendable roadkill on the road to progress. So here we are imbued in our country that we are the foremost of what is progress. You know, we're the apex of humanity. We don't really need to know about other cultures because we're there, honey. Malinche had her reasons, and a lot of Chicanas and a lot of Latinas have revisited female images in history. And La Malinche was Hernán Cortés's consort. If you don't know who Hernán Cortés was, he was a conquistador that went into Mexico in the 1500s and conquered Mexico, a Spaniard. So La Malinche was a noble woman of a neighboring tribe who was sold into uh, Montezuma's court so her stepbrother could gain entry. She was a linguist. She knew five indigenous languages, so she became one of the court interpreters. She learned Spanish very quickly. At any rate, in Mexico, to be called the son or daughter of this woman is the most vile curse word that you could ever be called. And so really what um, um, Ana Castillo and many of the other Chicanas talk about is the view of female in our society is really what's being imparted here. Not necessarily what um, Malincha did. And if you look at the little pictures on the side, what it says is it doesn't matter who the master is. If it's indigenous or European, when you're a slave, you have no options. And let's talk about that issue of power and defining who's important, who's powerful, who's beautiful, who's expendable. And so what I hope for all of you is that you'll go out, read, learn about other people, make that part of your knowledge base to be critical thinkers and dream us a better world. Thank you very much.